It may seem strange to you that this video is called Estimation Errors and Fourier Coefficients after I spent so much time over several videos telling you painstakingly trying to convince you that the Fourier transform is perfect and lossless. So how can we call these estimation errors? Well, what's actually happening is that the Fourier transform itself is perfect, but the signals that you're measuring and the equipment that you're using to measure those signals, those are not perfect. There are estimation errors. There's noise in the measurement. There's noise in your signals. There's uncertainty and variability. So this estimation error is not about the Fourier transform. This is about how much confidence you can have in the Fourier coefficients considering what you, the, that the thing that you're measuring, like the brain, and you know using your uh, electrophysiology equipment is itself a rather noisy device. Okay, so here you see a complex plane. And imagine that this is a Fourier coefficient for one particular frequency. It's a little bit abstracted, so it doesn't really matter which frequency this is, this is just some Fourier coefficient. So the first thing I wanna convince you of is that phase is independent of amplitude. Now, this is something that I highlighted in the previous section of the course where I talked about simulating sine waves, so generating sine waves, and you saw that we can have a sine wave with an amplitude parameter that is independent of the phase. So the phase here is, of course, as you know, this angle relative to the positive real axis of the line that connects the origin to the complex Fourier coefficient. Now, you can already imagine, you can visualize, that this line can be shorter or longer, so this Fourier coefficient can get closer to the origin or further away from the origin, and that doesn't change the angle. This angle is the same regardless of this distance. Now, here's a question for you. What is the one exception to this statement that I just made? What is the one case where the phase is not independent of amplitude, where you change the amplitude of this coefficient, so you get this some, somehow closer or further away to the origin, and then that actually does affect the phase value? Well, I hope you guessed that the answer is when the amplitude is exactly zero. So when there is zero amplitude or zero power, then this Fourier coefficient lies exactly at the origin of this plane. And what is the phase for a, a vector that has no length? Well, I mean, it, it's undefined. The question doesn't even make sense. You can think about that also from a trigonometric perspective. So we quantify the angle here such that the tangent of this angle is the ratio of the imaginary part to the real part. Well, if the imaginary part and the real part are both zero, then we're taking the tangent of zero over zero. So it's undefined, it doesn't exist. Okay, so the conclusion from this slide is that phase is independent of amplitude for all amplitude values except for exactly zero, when amplitude is exactly zero. And of course, in the context of the Fourier transform, an amplitude of zero for some Fourier coefficient means that the signal has no energy at that frequency. The signal doesn't look anything at all like a sine wave at that particular frequency. Okay, so this is about uh, the relationship between amplitude and phase. Now let's consider uncertainty. So what do I mean by uncertainty? Let's imagine you do your experiment and uh, you repeat a, so okay, let's say in your experiment, you have a research participant who is uh, looking at a picture that appears on the screen. So you know that the brain is a bit noisy, your measurement is a bit noisy, so you repeat that trial multiple times. You show the same stimulus on the screen in the same context, let's say a hundred times. So you repeat the, uh, the data a hundred times, you get a hundred different Fourier coefficients, one for each stimulus representation, and then you can plot all of those Fourier coefficients and uh, estimate their uncertainty. And maybe that cloud of uncertainty looks something like this. And this point here is the average of all of those hundred repetitions. So essentially what that means is that the true underlying Fourier coefficient 
we can be confident that it's somewhere in this circle, but we don't actually know where it is in this circle. So the true Fourier coefficient might be here, it might be here, it might be here. We're pretty sure it's not out here, but we don't know that it's exactly here. So it could be anywhere in this circle. This is our cloud of uncertainty. Again, this uncertainty is not coming from the Fourier transform. This uncertainty is coming from the fact that we are applying the Fourier transform to a noisy signal that has an, a system that has uncertainty built into it. Okay, so now the question is, is there still a independence of phase and amplitude in this example? So I would say the answer is technically uh, no, they are dependent because we don't really know where the Fourier coefficient is in here. So the angle could be kind of anywhere around here. You know, if, if this line, if the coefficient were here versus here, that would give us different angles here. But you can see that within this range of uncertainty, the angle isn't going to vary that much. So the angle of uncertainty is relatively small. It's, you know, by the time we get down here, that angle is just a, a relatively restricted range. So when the uncertainty is, or when the amplitude is large, then the phase is fairly confidently measured. Okay, but now let's take another case. Here, the amplitude in the center, so the average of this cloud of uncertainty, is definitely not zero. You can see that this coefficient is not at the origin. So it's small, the amplitude is small, but it's definitely non-zero. However, because of this cloud of uncertainty, this uh, Fourier coefficient actually could be anywhere inside this cloud, anywhere inside this circle. And that is pretty disastrous for estimating the phase because now the phase could literally be anything. We, the phase could be any possible value, anywhere from zero all the way up to pi and all the way down to two pi and spinning around again. So when the uncertainty is relatively large, so the uncertainty cloud includes the origin, then we really can't trust the value of phase. So based on this slide, we can say that the phase actually does depend on the amplitude in the presence of uncertainty. So if we are not totally confident about what the Fourier coefficient really is because we are sampling from noisy data, then when we have a large amplitude, we can be more confident that the value we estimate for phase in the real signal is, is pretty accurate. And when the amplitude is small, then we can be less confident. We don't have a lot of confidence in our estimate of phase.